Tom Osborne from tastylandscape.com. Today I'm going to show you how a dragon fruit is formed. And it all starts right here at the bud. And this is an early bud. It's probably a couple of centimeters in length or maybe an inch in length at the moment. And they always form at this little crevice here in the vine. And that's where those little thorns usually come out, little tiny little thorns. And uh, after a couple days, this is going to get bigger. So it's going to look more like this here. It's probably two or three times the size. Now a question that comes up, people ask, is, you know, do these flowers and fruit only form on young vines or on older vines or whatever? I find, you know, sometimes that's an issue with like figs or fruit, you know, stone fruit, like peaches. Uh, my experience is it doesn't really matter because if we look down here, this is, as we go down, it's going to be an older part of the vine. And all the way down here, this is a couple years old now, maybe three years old. Here's another little bud forming. So, and then here's even a woody one, and this has got a fruit on it. So, it, I don't think it matters, but um, I'll have to keep an eye on that. Anyways, so then the buds, back to the buds. So the buds get from this stage, and then about a week later, I'm going to walk over to another vine. A week later or so, then that flower bud is going to get pretty huge. And that's this here, this whole thing. It's about... 20, maybe 29 centimeters in length, about 10 inches long. And uh, this is going to open up probably in the next day or two. And how do I know that is because the flower is really big right now. And uh, these things here, these leaf looking things, uh, they start to pull away. These are called sepals. And they only start to really do that when it's about to open. Now. That's important because if you're interested in hand pollinating your dragon fruit, then it's great to know the timing because you only have one night. It's a small window of opportunity because these flowers open one night only, basically, unless you're in the jungle, then maybe two, but then they shrivel up and die. So keep an eye on that. Here's another one. This one's also about to open. And you can see here a little bit of the petal. I don't know if you can see that, but there's a little bit of the petal inside here, so these sepals are really pulling away. Then we'll come around the corner, and this here is a cluster of three flowers that opened last night. And uh, you can't, they're already starting to wither because it's in the middle of the day at the moment. But these flowers are awesome looking, and there's some pictures on the website if you want to check that out. But since we're here, let's open up these guys a little bit and uh, go over some anatomy because that's going to help if you're interested in hand pollinating. So I've already kind of pulled this apart a little bit. Okay, here we go. I don't know if you can see that. So let's go from outside in. Outside here, the sepals, we saw those earlier. And then these things, these numerous things around, these are all the stamens. And the stamens are made up of two basic parts. You have this long part here, which is the filament. And on the end, you have the anthers, and those little roundish looking small things are the anthers. And that is where the pollen grains are found. So that's the male part of the flower. Now the center part of the flower here, it's pretty cool looking, I'm gonna pull it out. It, this is the female part of the flower. So this female part of the flower here, the whole thing is called the pistil. So I guess, you know, flowers being sexual, this is, <laughs> this, this is the sex pistil. And at the end here, this octopus looking thing, this is the stigma. Then you have this long style. And then as you go deeper into the flower, then you have the ovary where the ovules are gonna be found. Those ovules will be the eggs basically. So the whole idea of this flower is uh, you wanna get these pollen grains, preferably from another uh, flower and cross pollinate from here and get this pollen onto the stigma. And from the stigma, it travels inside here, inside the style, and it goes all the way into the ovary and you have pollination. You have the pollen grains going to the ovary, into the little ovule, little eggs, and voila, you have fertilization. And then little seeds will form in here, and this part here will turn into the fruit, and this part here will wither away. So this whole part here, the flower, is basically just to get the bats or whatever is going to come by at night 
to pollinate this guy. It's basically um, just manipulation, really. Flowers, plants are great manipulators, and I'll talk about that later. But once you have all that together, this part is going to swell up. And uh, that's the other part of the plant's manipulation. They want you to find this part attractive, so you grab onto it, and then you carry those seeds somewhere. It's kind of like a bribe. Carry those seeds somewhere and drop them off, and then this plant will extend its reach. And since plants can't move around, they, they kind of have strategies to make you move their stuff around for them. And that's the whole idea there. So anyways, this is going to get swollen. This is going to fade away, and we're going to see that over here. So let's go over here. Here we have a uh, flower that's gone to that stage that we discussed earlier. This is the developing fruit where the uh, ovary of the flower is. And so this ovary part is turning into the fruit. And this other part, which is the petals and the sepals and all that stuff, is just starting to, to fade away. It's all dried up. And then over time, from here, you're going to get to this point. So this is the part that's going to attract, you know, you and me and anyone else who eats dragon fruit. And so this is going to start to get red, a little bit of uh, coloration on it here. And it's going to become more attractive to the animals in the jungle that will grab this, eat it, and put the seeds elsewhere. And so this part starts to get red. And these here, these little wings, which are like modified sepals, they'll start to shrivel a bit as uh, this fruit becomes ripe. And then over time, maybe another couple days, less than a week later, you're going to have what we got here. And this is another dragon fruit, which is actually just about ready to eat. And um, it gets a lot redder. These wings start to, to shrivel away a little bit more. And, uh, and that's it. So if you're interested in growing these guys, i got a lot more tips about how to do it. Uh, it's... They have some specific growing requirements, but uh, once you dial it in, they're pretty awesome, and the fruit is amazing. Check it out at tastylandscape.com.